Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Python. Today we'll be building a calculator using TKinter and then after that we'll be exporting it using PyInstaller so that it no longer requires Spider or Idle to run. So it'll be a completely separate application when we finish with it. So this is going to be a two-parter. In the first part we'll just be doing numbers and then in the second part we'll be putting basic functions like plus, minus, divide, equals, clear and quit. So as you'll get to see in the code, um, there'll be a lot of repetition, but with slight changes. So I won't be building the whole thing from scratch, but you will definitely know what to do next. And I'll explain to, explain to you as clearly as possible. So let's flip over to the screen and let's get started. So let's zoom in. So first thing you'll see here is I have import TK into as TKR. Now, if you go to Stack Overflow, you will see many times, probably if not all of the time, you'll see from TK to import star. And the difference is that the star means that the functions are ready to use. However, when I put from TK into TKR, whenever I want to call a command within the TK into module, I have to put, well, in this case, TKR dot. So, when I, so here I've got TKR dot TK tkr.entry, tkr.end, you see what I mean? So if you had from tk into import star, you just have to put end, end, entry, tk, and, all, and so on. Also, uh, in some examples, you might see everything within a class, because that's best practice when using tk into module. But, you know, I'm trying to do something different here. So probably that's a bit easier, because you may not have come across classes, or you may not be as... Um, familiar with using classes. So first things first, let me run through this code. So what we've got here is we've got our main window, we've got our buttons one to nine, and this in that section here, and then above it, because we have to have the definitions first, the functions first, so that they can be called within the buttons when they're created. So the buttons, the actions for the buttons one to nine are here. And then we're going to be stopping here. So at row, uh, line 60, we're going to be stopping in part one. And then in part two, we're going to be putting extra buttons in. And I'm explaining this, especially this equals, which caused so much problem. And then this is what activates the command. So this will actually be in our part one because your TK inter won't run without this at the bottom. So let's first things first. So the first thing we've got to do is let me show you the output. So let's this is what we're going to end up achieving. So as you can see here, we have it does all the buttons. You can clear it. You can put eight minus nine. You can does um, calculations. Three times nine, twenty-seven. You can also do bigger ones. So, you know, clear it and quit it. So this, this will be our final result. Notice that the output is no longer below my face, but it is in a separate window. That is one of the wonders of TKinter. So that is our output. Let's get to the output. So by the end of the second part, that will be the result. So first things first is to import TKinter as TKR. Let me zoom in here. So this is going to be our rough page where I'm going to show you step by step how to do everything. And then we're going to create our window. So this is our master window. And what it does is we're just calling the TK function within TKinter and calling it app. So essentially what it is going to be. So it's a mini application. Next thing we'll do is we're going to give our window a title and a geometry. So I just put some random numbers in at the beginning, and then what I do at the end is then I resize the whole thing at the end around my result. So it's both a start and an end thing to do. So let's just do this. So what we've done, and then don't forget the thing at the bottom, we need to put that in there as well. So app.title, which is simply title. You see here, do exactly the same thing with geometry. 
and notice that all these are in the command and the size are in quotation marks and then app.mainloop exactly the same thing we call our main window and we activate the command so this is what we have right now we just created our empty window that is what we have now this is what we're trying to get to well actually we're trying to get to part one one to nine so the next thing to do is to put lots of space between activate command and your edit window because you've got approximately you know mm, lots of gaps here so I'd say about 90 lines of code to get in there so the next thing to do is to create our button that is what we're going to do let me just put the comment in there so the next thing we'll do is create a button and literally it's quite simply it is button1 equals tkr dot button and then we're going to put it within our app so that's so that's how it links to within our main window it goes within our app we specify the width and the height height the text that goes in it and this is the key bit here the command so the command is what the button will do when you click on it when you press it and then we've got to sort it on our in our within our main window and we can use that by two ways either dot pack or dot grid now dot pack it just uh, puts it on the page and then you can sort of change it around with other things to make it look nice but uh, with the grid I prefer it because it snaps it to like a sort of grid like pattern and it makes it much easier to make it look much nicer and sort of more geometric so that's what I've done I've, I've put uh, bottom one dot grid and I've gridded it to row one column zero uh, that next thing to do is to create our input box now you can either create the input box first or the button first it doesn't really matter when you're trying to do them both together so the next thing to do is to create our input box and you can see calc regards what we're going to call an input box c calc so whenever you want to put uh, a number or a function within our input box we're going to have to reference c calc I put C calc so you can see the calculation. That's, that's my way of simplifying it. Then it's simply tkr.entry because it's an entry box. And then we put it within our app, justify it right. The importance of that justify is because if we justified it left, the writing will start here and then go this way. But now we justified it right, it will start here and it will come out this way. So you don't want numbers appearing this way, you want them to appear, you know, where it seems more normal. You're trying to get this to apply to the real world as much as possible if not exactly so then we're going to do grid it again to row zero so it's going to take up column span four so it's going to take up the entire of row zero so when we talk about grid we talk about this is row zero row one row two row three row four this is column zero column one column two column three so when we say you know row one column one that's the two you know row zero column zero is like that corner there so that's what we mean when we say grid but this has a column span of four so it just goes across the whole of top row so the key thing here is the command call one so the next thing to do is to put define is to define what that command is and that's exactly what we're going to do so let's just copy and paste this here sorry about the old copy and pasting but I think it makes it very good easy to understand so what we're simply going to do is create a function call one and then in the C calc, so in the input box, we're going to insert 
at the end, if you didn't have it at the end, you would get, um, let's say you wanted to have 12. Now, instead of having one and then two, if you press one and then two, if you had it zero, not end, it would actually say 21. Two would come before the one. And, you know, that would say 321 rather than one, two, three. So that's why you have to put it at the end every time. So that's what we do. So you insert at the end the number one. And that is called call one. So that is how they link together. And the app and the CCAP is how they link to within the main window. So hopefully when I press F5, you'll have this, this. And then you press, press one, you'll have ones appearing in the input box. So at the moment, we have a button when, that when you press, it goes to an input box. So that is essentially what the calculator is. And then the next thing is to literally repeat it a shed loads of times, but doing numbers, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And, you know, and then doing it with the diff more special functions as well. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to repeat this. This is what we do. This is how you, you would do it. You'd have, you do that a lot of times all the way down, you know, a lot more than what I've got here. And then you'd say that's row one, column one, row one, column two, column three. And then you'd say that was two, column zero. And then you would change the bottom ones to be button two, button two, button three, button three. Because yeah, it's two lines per button, one to create it and one to, to place it on the main window. And then you'd change the functions, call three, call four, and so on. And then you'd change the text so you knew what number you wanted. And then you do exactly the same thing with the function, exactly the same thing. Just recall it, rename it, and just rejig exactly the same thing you have. Really great example of sort of recycling, code recycling in action. And then you have all that, and then eventually you'll end up with one to nine here and one to nine here. Now, one thing I have actually left out is the number zero. I don't know if you've noticed that. So let's get that into my actual thing. Let's actually do that right here, right now. Let's do that. So let's save that. So here we have our uh, calculator. Now let's add the number zero. Let's put the zero in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put quit below here. So let's find where, where I have quit here. I'm skipping ahead a bit. And we're going to put this as column span four. And it's going to be down here. So let us resize this to 320 and rerun it. There we go, there's quit. But let's call it, make it a bit higher. There we go, there's quit at the bottom. So now we have space for button number zero. And then let's call that 18. So we need to find the next one, which is 19. And then we are going to put that as row four, column zero. That text is a zero, and then we are going to call the function here. Exactly what I'm doing. What I showed you is to, you know, copy and paste. Essentially, copy and paste. Fifteen. So we call that sixteen. We're going to call function sixteen. Oh, 16 is to quit, my bad. So we call it 17, and that's call number zero, and let's run it. Here we go. We've got the zeros in there. 
and quit. And let's save that. And there we go. That is me showing you what to do in action. So what you should be end, ending up with in the end of part one is one to nine. So and zero. So zero to nine. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. And then part two will be going over the rest here. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Second part will be coming straight up, only within a matter of days. And subscribe to my channel if you like it. And also you'll be able to get a notification as to when the second part comes up. So subscribe to our channel, check out more of my videos and get ready for part two because it's coming right up. Thanks very much for watching.